Alrighty folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making Salisbury steaks. He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And if that don't give you reason to rejoice today, I just don't know what will. But I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to make this. There are kind of some basic ingredients, and there are a lot of ways to make it stretch, go a little farther, feed a few more people. The basic recipe, you need about a pound of ground chuck. Now you could go up to ground round or something if you wanted to. You don't want to get too lean with this because it's not going to have a good flavor if you go too lean. But you don't want to go with too much fat because then it's going to be greasy even if you drain the fat. Um, you really need a Worcestershire sauce for this. And uh, if you've watched some other videos, you know that I have a problem with that because Brett has a fish allergy and Worcestershire sauce has anchovies in it, which is a fish. Now, what I do, and you can do this if you're dealing with food allergies and stuff too, it's easy to substitute stuff. The basic ingredients in this are vinegar and molasses and uh, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of sugar. So what I have here is basically a homemade Worcestershire sauce without the anchovies. And I just kind of added those ingredients until I got a similar taste to what's in this bottle. But you only need about a tablespoon. And this is really the only way to get that Salisbury steak flavor. So you do need it, even if you have to substitute it. Um, you also need some seasoning to go in the meat. And I'm using a tablespoon of chopped onions, about half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of pepper. And um, you need stuff to make the gravy. Now this is beef base bouillon. It's a powder granulated. This is what it looks like right here. And you can also use bouillon cubes. But this is one of those things that your moms and your grandmas, they kept in their cabinet for times when food is scarce. If you have beef broth, you can use it. But this will last in your cabinet, just takes up a little bit of room. It's much less expensive and much less time consuming than making homemade beef broth. A lot of people have asked me what are some things that they should be stocking. Definitely beef and chicken bouillon. And I like the Knorr brand because it doesn't have a lot of artificial stuff in it and it doesn't have added MSGs and stuff in it. It's a lot more natural. And if you're doing something like this, a lot more natural is definitely better. So this is definitely a pantry must. And I have two cups of water that I'm gonna use for my gravy. So I have two teaspoons of the bouillon. It's one teaspoon per cup of water. And I've got two tablespoons of cornstarch. Now you can thicken it with something else if you want to. Um, it's up to you. But to make this go a little farther and feed more people, we're going to add an egg to it. And I'm going to go ahead and mix some of these ingredients up here and then we'll carry it over to the stove. We're just going to kind of dump all this stuff in with our meat, our egg. And you want about half a cup of breadcrumbs. Now this can be any kind of breadcrumbs. If you've got some stale bread, put it in the oven on 200 degrees for a while or even leave it sitting out on the countertop and let it get nice and hard and then crumble it up. Um, crackers are a good cheap way to get breadcrumbs and that's actually, actually what this is. This is a half a cup of finely crushed crackers. You don't have to buy expensive breadcrumbs. So put that in here. Um, we're going to go ahead and put our chopped onion in here and our salt and our pepper. And I like about half of my Worcestershire in my meat and I like about half of it in the gravy. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon or so 
and this obviously isn't a measuring spoon maybe a little bit more to my meat and then I'm going to add a little bit to my gravy and I have an onion just a medium onion that I've sliced up really thin that I'm going to use in my gravy but if you have picky eaters that don't like onion use onion powder to flavor your gravy so anyway let's carry this over the stove and we'll start cooking Now, you can cook this in your oven on about 350 degrees. Um, you can do it entirely in the oven. And in fact, I have some in the oven now that I'm going to show you. And what I have in the oven doesn't have the breadcrumbs and it doesn't have the eggs. It's the same amount of ground beef and the same amount of seasoning, but no breadcrumbs, no egg, no filler. And what the filler does is it just allows you to make a few extra patties. Now the pound of ground chuck without any filler in it makes about four Salisbury steaks. With the filler, you can get six small ones. So that's the difference in feeding possibly a couple of extra people just by adding the filler into it. And whether or not you add the filler is entirely up to you. Um, it's just kind of what you need, how many people you have to feed, how much you have to spend on groceries. It's also, I mean, of course, without the bread crumbs or the cracker crumbs or whatever you decide to use, of course, it has fewer carbs. And something else that would make it more calorically friendly is to drain the grease. Now I don't like all the grease in mine even with ground chuck. So when I make it in the oven I put my um, patties in and I cook them about 20 minutes then I drain the grease and then I just dump my um, gravy ingredients in let it cook about 30 minutes, stir it a little bit and let it cook about another 30 minutes. And it's literally that simple. I'm going to go ahead and get my pan turned on about medium heat. And we're going to start just making these patties. You do want to make sure you have it well mixed. Now this much will make four big patties or six smaller ones. And here's another tip about making your food go farther. We eat a lot with our eyes. It doesn't matter what kind of meat I'm cooking for dinner. Brett will usually eat two pieces. And it doesn't usually matter what size they are. If I made this into six patties, he would eat two. If I made it into four patties, he would eat two. If I made it into three patties, he would eat two. So what you do if you've got to feed more people is you just make the pieces smaller and you mash them out thinner so it looks like they're getting a much larger patty and they get the same number of pieces. Each person that you're serving gets the same number of pieces that they would normally get but you can feed them with less food. And you do want to mash these out kind of um, thin because as they cook, they're going to tend to draw up. And you want to mash them out quite a bit bigger than what you want because they're going to draw up. Now comes the hardest part about this whole process, washing your hands. When you finish with your patties, you do want to make sure you wash your hands really, really good. What we're going to do is we're just going to let our patties fry for maybe three or four minutes on each side to kind of start cooking them. And at that point, if you want to remove some of the grease, you can remove some of the grease. And then we're going to add our onions and let them brown a little bit and then we'll add our gravy to this. If you put them in the oven, like I said, you're going to cook them about 20 minutes, 350, drain the grease and then add your gravy ingredients to it. Um, and I'll show you how I do that. I don't um, like bring my water to a boil or anything like that. I said I like a little of my Worcestershire sauce in the gravy to give it flavor. So I just put it in the water and put my cornstarch in the water and my beef base. 
and I stir that up and after about 20 minutes in the oven you just dump that in with them and let it cook about 30 minutes and after about 30 minutes it should be bubbling and you give it a little stir and maybe flip your patties over because they'll tend to brown more on the top than on the bottom because the bottom's in the liquid and let them cook about another 30 minutes but that's all there is to the oven method um, i use onion powder when i put them in the oven and not the sliced onion but i thought since we were doing both ways, we would use some sliced onion up here. So if you were doing these in the oven, a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of onion powder to your gravy mix before you dump it in the pan. And that's it. It's definitely easier in the oven and it takes less attention. I mean, a couple little stirs is all you have to worry about. Where if you're doing it on the stove in a skillet, you do have to keep an eye on them. You don't want to burn them. You're going to flip them here and then you're going to saute your onions and all that stuff. And you can use the onion powder if you're making them in a skillet too. If whoever you're cooking for doesn't like onions. Okay, our meat's been cooking maybe five, six minutes and you can see how much grease is in this skillet. And that's just more than I want to leave in there because when it's all done, that much to me makes the gravy taste greasy and I just don't like that. If you're in a situation where you need the calories from that fat, leave it in. Or if you like it, leave it in. But I get a lot of comments about, um, some people just ask about keto stuff, some people ask about diabetic stuff. Um, I think keto diets, it doesn't really matter how much fat you're eating, but diabetics, the fat definitely does matter because it adds a lot of calories and a lot of times the fat is harder to digest and keep your sugar under control than the calories or the carbs are. So if you're doing diet, if you're cooking for a diabetic, you definitely would want to remove that fat. Or if you're just trying to watch your weight, you want to remove it. Like I said, most of us don't need it, and I don't care for it. So I'm going to get this grease out of here real quick. Now, there's still plenty enough grease in here. You can see it all around in the pan to fry the onions and also to give the dish plenty of flavor. So now I'm just going to dump my onions in here and cook them a little. cover the onions um, because they'll cook a lot faster and if you're in a hurry this might not be the dish because you are going to simmer this in the gravy for about an hour whether you put it in the oven or you cook it on top of the stove but this will get the onions done a little bit quicker um, if you're in a hurry it'll speed it up a little bit when I make this, when my kids were little, I served it a lot with um, steamed rice and maybe some green beans or even some steamed vegetables like California mix, broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, things like that. Um, Brett likes it with mashed potatoes. You can serve it over any kind of pasta. Um, I think egg noodles is kind of a traditional way to serve it. Most of the time, though, it is Salisbury steak with mashed potatoes, but my kids really, really love this with rice. Um, and there are a lot of diabetic diets that say absolutely no mashed potatoes. But if you look at the basic carbs that people eat with every meal, it's either rice, potatoes, or pasta. And out of those three, Potatoes have more nutrients and less car or fewer carbs per serving. So if you're trying to cut back on carbs and you're diabetic, the way might not be to do away with your mashed potatoes. It might be just to cut your mashed potatoes down because, like I said, they have more nutrients. They're not abundantly nutrient, but they have more than the alternatives of rice or pasta. Now, there's a lot of totally veggie alternatives like... Um, the uh, cauliflower rice, which is cauliflower that's chopped up and kind of resembles the texture of rice. 
and you could certainly if you wanted a super low carb version of this go with that hmm. my goodness those onions smell so good Okay, the onions are already tender and they're already starting to get brown so at this point all we're going to do is add our gravy now if it's been sitting here a minute you do want to stir it up you don't want all your beef base and all of your uh, cornstarch in the bottom you, and you definitely 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 want to get that cornstarch in while it's cold and just add that to your skillet now you can um, cover this and you can put the skillet in the oven 350 for about an hour or you can leave it on the stove top bring it up to a simmer and turn the heat all the way down on low put a lid on it and let it sit here and simmer for about an hour and that's mostly so that that gravy really gets into the center of your patties. Now they're already pretty much cooked. They wouldn't be quite done yet, but it wouldn't take long for them to get done. And this gravy that you're going to have in here is going to have a very similar taste to like your roast gravy and stuff like that. Let's turn it all the way down on low because we already have some bubbles in there. You might have to stir this once or twice just to keep it everything from sticking to the bottom if you're cooking it on top of the stove. And even if you put it in the oven, you're going to want to stir it at least once. And that's all there is to it. While that's sitting there cooking, you can do your mashed potatoes, you can do your green beans or your rice or whatever. And in an hour, it's going to look like this. Your gravy is going to be all made and thick and this was without the filler in it. The same amount of meat, the same amount of spices. Flip them over. They are nice and brown. And you can see what I have here with the pound of meat that I had without the fillers. It would probably feed two adults. Or maybe one adult and a couple of kids and that's it but by adding the egg and the um, crackers or breadcrumbs you can feed at least one more adult with a pound of meat Now, because we cooked this for an hour, it's going to be super flavorful, and that Worcestershire sauce is going to give it that taste if you've ever had this in a restaurant, and I know there's a lot of different frozen varieties of it. Um, I know when I was growing up, we got the frozen variety sometime. Yes, it's been around my whole lifetime. And sometimes when my kids were growing up, they got the frozen variety because it was really, really cheap and I could feed all four of my kids and I think a lot of times they'd have it on sale for a dollar. I mean, when you can feed a family of six for a dollar, you can't hardly pass that deal up. If you make it homemade, it is going to cost you a little bit more than the frozen stuff, but it is much better. But with the Worcestershire sauce, it's going to have that very unique taste that you want. It's not a lot of work. Like I said, the hardest part is washing your hands after you make the patties. And you can wear gloves if you have them and you want them. I'm doing this thing now where I'm trying not to use so much disposable stuff because the price of it has just gotten ridiculously high and it's so hard to find anything disposable right now. So, you know, that's up to you. Um, we've got a, a couple of things going on. We're doing special things in the comment sections of all the videos. So we're getting close to Thanksgiving. I'm actually filming this on um, October the 12th, which is Canada's Thanksgiving. So let's start our um, what we're thankful for comments. In the comment section, just leave a comment, something you're thankful for. Uh, even if it's just having something warm 
to go on your plate tonight for dinner. Uh, and also, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We have a really cool giveaway coming up for y'all next month. It is a new wood pizza oven. It's a, a new product. It's a cube stove that has a pizza oven with it. And um, it's a wood burning thing. You can cook outdoors. It would be great for off the grid type cabins or camping. Um, just something fun to get together out on a patio or a back porch or a deck, you know, and uh, maybe have a little you could roast marshmallows and stuff on the stove or hot dogs and everybody could make artisan pizzas but something different to do um, it is a pretty nice gift and we're going to be showing you how to use that coming up here pretty soon we're waiting for them to release it it hasn't actually even been released yet and they sent us two one that we can show you how to use it and one that we can give away so we're going to be giving that one away coming up next month sometime and you do have to be a subscriber to win it and you don't want to miss it like i said it's a pretty good giveaway so be sure and subscribe if you're not and be watching for that um, anybody that's into off the grid stuff or outdoor cooking this would be a really cool gift farm for christmas too if you're looking for something different so we're going to have that coming up real soon as soon as they give us a release date for it when they're going to have it available for people to buy huh. I'm trying to think if there's anything else going on. Well, if there is, I forgot it. <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. And don't forget to leave your I'm thankful for comments. If you haven't already, don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first. <laughs>